Okay, I'm really excited to dive into today's video because I've worked a long and hard time to try to create these transitions that I'm about to go through. But the reason that I created them is because I love motion graphics and I've been doing them for quite a long time. I actually spent the last two years working for Matt Diavella and doing all his graphics that appear in his videos. And over that time, I kind of gravitated towards a few styles that I would consistently bring graphics in and out with. But during that time, I was mainly using Adobe products to complete all those projects. And now that I'm inside DaVinci Resolve, I really feel like there's a few things missing. So I've been working pretty hard to recreate all the transitions that I use to bring in and out all my graphics. And I wanna walk through a few use cases today inside DaVinci Resolve because I didn't really create these transitions to be used on footage. And while you can use them on footage, I wanna show you how I use them basically on PNGs, logos, pretty much any graphic that you can think of. Okay, so let's get into it. And the link is down below if you wanna download this pack and follow along. All right, so we got three main categories here of animations. We got the 3D fall in, a pop in, and a push in. All of these can be adjusted and they each have a few different easing options and they all have their respective out animations as well to match the in. So once you have double clicked the DRFX file, you'll find these in video transitions, the creative herd, and if you drop that down, you'll have motion transitions. So I've kind of divided them into two here. Everything within is for the front of the clip, the in animation and everything without is for the out animation, the end of the clip. So basically what I've done here is pick my go-to animations and then I've made a few variations of how they actually ease in because to me that pretty much is the bread and butter of motion graphics. So let me show you what I mean quickly here. Let's have a look at these four transitions here, these pops. So this first one is pretty much just a generic easy. I'm going to turn the motion blur off just to show you guys quickly all these four. So this is exactly kind of what you you would find in Resolve as a normal easing. But if we move over into pop bounce, this is a better use case of better easing, depending on what your subject matter is. And then same thing with overshoot. So the overshoot is a type of easing and it's definitely my go-to pretty much on every single project, on every single animation that I ever do. I start with overshoot and I see how that feels. And then I'll have either back it off or I'll move it into something like bounce or something like that. So this is definitely my favorite across all the transitions. And then we have a spin, which has like a spin and uh, overshoot a bit as well. So this works better, I think, when it's a little bit longer. And you might feel like maybe for this, a 360 spin feels a little bit cheesy. Maybe it would just work good with like a 90. You know, yeah, that looks like a little bit better. Uh, looks intentional. Okay, so let's say for this example, we actually want our logo kind of to be in the bottom left-hand corner, and we want it to like spin on just like we have it right now. Right now, it's gonna animate right from the center here. Sometimes we actually do want it to animate from the center. Like if you're using, say, pop bounce, like animating in from the center actually doesn't look that bad. And sometimes you do want all, if you have like a row of icons or something, some, sometimes I do want them all to come to the center. So I wanted to leave it that way. But if we go back to our spin here and we want it to spin right on spot, we can come over into our fusion overlay. We can grab these two little arrows, which will actually move our origin. And you can see here our origin is actually moved and you can move this manually if you want. And it'll spin right in place there. Or maybe if you're working with an offshoot or something, you want it to come right from the bottom of the screen, off the screen a little bit. And you can do that too. So all the pops have an origin and the quick and easy way to access that is just going to Fusion Overlay. Most of this pack as well has motion blur, but you can click this and just turn it off. But you can dial in however much motion blur that you want, but beware, the higher the number, the longer it's gonna take to render. Okay, so let's say this is what we want it. Here's this really simple use case that I would actually use this for. And I would push it in with an overshoot and I would also push it out with an overshoot. So right now it's going the wrong way. I actually want it to come from over here and because the angle's at zero, 90 is up, 180 is over. Well, that's a little too fast. Maybe we'll try 25 in this case. 
I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to maybe just do 26. And you can have it come across like that. I actually think that's kind of cool. And again, I'm going to crank up the motion blur. And we're going to actually go down. So we're going to come in from the side and then we're going to go out down. You might be like, why is this in an angle? I thought it was kind of a nice ability to kind of have it come from pretty much any direction because I didn't know where the starting point would actually be. So yeah, we got a super, super simple transition here. So we come in from the left, down. <laughs> the motion blur is taking its toll. So let's turn that off. Yeah, nice and simple, short and sweet but it really sells this effect. And even if you were to put a little bit of like camera shake on top of this, I think that's really where you start to sell uh, motion graphics. So now it like never stops moving. Yeah. To me, that looks great. That's a great use case. Uh, let's move on. So I have a simple title, hard cut on, not that interesting, but let's take one of these transitions. Another one of my go-to animations is when something is the focal point, like this text in the middle of the screen, is basically just to have, again, I'm going to use this overshoot, and just let it be the focal point. So maybe 25, 25, let's see where we're at. And then you have, comes right over. There we go, we got a bounce on, and it just kind of falls on the screen. I would say something like this, you could actually use the pop out animation. So if you're doing this, I feel like it would actually work. Drops on and then it falls through. This might make total sense to you already, but for a lot of the motion graphics that I do, I try to think of the actual flow of the animation. So something like this falls down and then you could continue that motion to continue falling. It wouldn't all the time make sense to fall and then go back where it originated. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's the same sort of thing when you bring something on from left to right, you wanna find another thing that goes from left to right. It's the same sort of thought process that if I brought something down, then continue that motion down. Yeah, that's just my two cents and uh, yeah, something to look out for. So I said originally that these weren't for footage, but you can 100% use them for footage and I'll show you right now. I'm just gonna use a quick in pop here for this little picture in picture. Again, right here. you can see the anchor point is right here. in the middle, but for this case, I don't think we want that. So let's turn on our fusion overlay and just plop that right in the center. And now right here. just pops up just like that. And I think that actually looks super great. So something to be wary of here, these transitions are not meant to be between two clips. They're meant to bring something in and to bring something out. That's it, that's all we're working with. So let's say I put this transition in between, this push transition in between these two clips. Nothing's gonna happen. It's gonna go black because there's no in point or no out point for that one clip. So if I play that back, it can bring the next clip in. So that's something to be wary of. So that's a heads up for now. That's the way these transitions work. And that's really why I say, that these transitions are not meant for footage. Okay, thank you for watching and I hope these transitions actually help you in your motion graphic journey. And yeah, I appreciate the support. And if you wanna stay tuned for more DaVinci Resolve stuff, hit that subscribe button. And yeah, see you in the next one. Peace.